Hi everyone and welcome. In this review note, we are going to use a combination of role-based access control and file system permissions to configure a pretty common use case. Here's what we got. Got this folder named Publications. This has been shared out on the network. Everyone full control through the share permission as per best practices. If I look inside of this, I've got two folders, one for human resources, one for operations. Typically, every department would have their own folder and everybody in the organization would be able to read all of the documents that get published out into publications. Also, typically, there's somebody within each one of these departments that has the task of making sure that those documents stay up to date. Let me pop over to my domain controller and show you what I've set up to use from a user perspective. All right, so I've already pre-created these to make it easy for us. So I created some users. I've got two users in the human resources group and two users that are in the operations group. And I just use generic names to make it really easy to see what's going on. Also, I've created some role groups. So I've got a group here for all of my HR users and I've got a group for all of my ops users. Both of these user accounts are members of the HR users group and both of these accounts a member of the ops users group. Now, in addition to that, I've created two other role groups. I've got one for human resources pubs maintainers and one for ops pubs maintainers. And I took one user, user one in this case, from the HR collection of users. I put them in the pubs maintainers and I took user one from ops and put them into the ops pubs maintainers. Now, the reason for that is those are the users that I chose that are going to be maintaining those publications. So they have an additional role to just being a user within their department. Now, on top of that, I also created some security groups we're going to use to apply permissions. So in this case, I've got an access control, HR pubs read write. So what this means is I'm going to use this in the future to give somebody read write permission to the HR publications folder. I've got another one that's going to work the same way for ops. Let's go back over to our member server for the file services and we'll check that out. Okay, so let's see how we've got our permissions set up. Right now, if I go back up onto publications, look at the properties, security, look at my access control list, and we see that I've not made any changes here. So everything's still being inherited from E. I'm the owner, so I'm listed in this. We don't want everybody to be able to write, so this has to go. And in order to do that, we're going to disable inheritance, convert, and then once that is done, I will be able to take this guy and remove it. All right, now, if you're not sure what we did there, if you that means you probably haven't looked at the basic file system permissions video yet, and I would suggest that you go and do that because some of this is not going to make a lot of sense to you if you haven't. Now, the other thing we want to do is look at the fact that everybody can read, and this is going to be inherited by everything that's subordinate to the publications folder, meaning those department folders and any documents we put in them, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want to happen. So we're all good here. Once we get inside here, however, if we look at HR and look at the permissions on the folder, of course, we get everything that's being inherited from the parent publications folder, but nobody can make any changes here. Everything's read execute except for administrators and the owner. So this is not something that we're really going to want to see. So the question is, who do we really want to have write permission into that? And that's where that role that we put together with the HR pubs maintainers comes into play. And also the permission group, which is going to allow read write into this folder. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to add an access control entry. I'm going to pick access control. And this is going to be HR pubs since I'm working on the HR group. We're going to add right. That's going to apply to this folder and everything underneath it. So whoever ends up creating this content will be able to manage it. I'll say OK. And here we see our new permission that's added in. Now, again, the HR pubs maintainers role group is a member of this guy. 
since we provided this guy with read write, that permission will be acquired by the HR pubs maintainers group, which is going to be acquired by the user that is in that group or any users in that group, which is HR user one. So let's check out that access. They come over to effective, hang on, sorry, let me go back and apply that. Okay, come over to effective access. I'm gonna pick HR user one first. And if I look at effective access, we can see that HR user one has everything they need for read and write. Now, on the other hand, if we try HR user two, who is still an HR user, but not an HR pubs maintainer, and we look at their effective access, they get read. If we go in and take a look at, say, somebody that's in the ops group, say ops user one, then they are going to get read. Of course, the reason they get that is because they are a member at this point of users who have read and execute being inherited from publications and that just blows all the way down through the directory structure. We would do exactly the same thing over on the ops folder. We want to see that very quickly. Take the access control list. I'm going to want to add in. My security principle is going to be the ops pubs maintainer or the ops pubs read write permission. I'm going to add write, say OK and apply that. And now as a quick check, if I look at my ops user one who is in the ops pubs maintainers group, we can see that they get read write. And if we look at the other ops user, we'll see that they get read only. And of course, if we look at one of the HR users, we can see that they will also get read only. So classic use case publications, readable to everybody in the organization, maintained by certain selected individuals in different departments using role-based access control. That's a wrap for the video. Hopefully this was helpful for you and we'll see you next time.